Hello YouTube and welcome to Honda's scooter. Is it an adventure bike? I'm not too sure. I'm going scooter purely because it's got that classic scooter step over gap in the middle <laughs> for want of a better term. But we've got the XADV. XADV on the side there. 750 this version so they do a 350 version as well. We've gone straight in for the 750 and I've got to be honest I do know a bit about this bike. I've ridden the Africa Twin with the DCT transmission. I'm actually really looking forward to riding this. I think this looks like a mega scooter, motorbike, don't know. I'm going to call it a scooter but I think it looks like probably the coolest scooter on the market today surely. But let's jump on and give her a test ride. So she retails at ten nine nine nine, so pretty much eleven thousand pounds. I've never ridden it before. To be honest, I'm not much of a scooter man either, so I'm not used to scooters but initially jumping on it doesn't feel like a scooter it feels like an adventure bike very much reminiscent of the uh, africa twin to be honest so we've got the dct version this is a rear brake so i'm gonna have to concentrate with that not a clutch but let's fire her up and there we go so it's got the engine out of the NC750 parallel twin. We'll go over specs and horsepower a little bit later on. Let's just really take her for a ride, bare bones, first impressions. You just pop her in drive there and we're good to go. Obviously look over your shoulder to not wipe out customers. Ridden the Africa Twin and the actually the new NT1100, both with the DCT versions, and I was very impressed with them. First impressions for this, it is smooth as you like. Hey all! Hey! <laughs> 30 seconds I already like this! Now I try not to rave about all bikes I, I test ride, I, I genuinely just love motorbikes so I pretty much do like them all but some I prefer more than others and obviously some are better than others. Huh, I'm struggling to get my head around it. First off the DCT feels very nice, it's so smooth. For some reason the DCT actually I found find better in the Africa Twin than on the NT1100. I'm not sure whether that's a tuning vibe or what's going on there, but yeah, in this, initially it feels like the good version, feels like a good tune for this bike. Yeah, initial thoughts, it's quite a high, higher seat than I than I initially thought it would be. I believe it's 820 millimeter seat height and it feels a lot more substantial than I was expecting as well. It doesn't feel like a scooter. Feels like a proper motorbike, this. Adventure bike. Taking a minute to get used to it. Oh, it's got a nice noise. I'm actually in Chiswick. I'd actually like to say thank you to Chiswick Honda for giving me this demo for test riding this. It's really nice of them. Wouldn't be able to do these reviews without it, so thank you, Chiswick Honda. This is a really interesting concept to me, this. So it's a scooter. Obviously with a DCT automatic transmission, which is a, just a brilliant recipe for city riding. It's one thing you've got to watch out for when you're stopping. Don't grab the right hand brake, which is the front, and the left hand at the same time. You really come to a stop. I thought, I was like muscle memory thinking it was the clutch then. Back to the, the concept of this bike, a scooter slash automatic, city, perfect riding. But I believe this has it up on all other scooters. It's a lot more substantial. It feels like more of a serious concept, more of an actual motorcycle than a, than a scooter, if you see what I mean. It's got sort of all of the bells and whistle as a top of the range adventure motorcycle would have, but in scooter form. It's a really interesting concept. Some people, you could think Honda have gone nuts. You could be like, hang on a minute, what on earth is this thing about? But to be honest, as soon as I saw it marketed, and this is um, updated in 2021, this is a 2022 model, which there's not much difference, it's just uh, paintwork, which is different for 2022. But yeah, I, I got it. As soon as I saw it, I thought, yes, Honda, good bike, good decision. I think it's great fun. I mean, scooters should be like that, but it's got all of the bells and whistles of a top of the range adventure motorbike. It really does. You've got 
adjustable everything, adjustable power response, traction control, ABS, engine braking, it's nuts, it's got five different rider modes on it. Has it got cruise control? Haven't seen that yet. Don't believe it does have cruise control actually. Heated grips, I'm sure you can spec heated grips if it doesn't already have them. But yeah, so far guys, just cruising around town, very comfortable and the best thing about these scooters, which I really like, you can just put your feet right forward like this, like you're on a big Harley or something, lay back and just cruise, it's really comfy. What's the overtake like? Yeah, it's got plenty of go for in city riding. You do not have to worry about power for in the city, I can tell you that. And it's smooth as well, that was really smooth. If we come on to the riding modes, what's it got? So it's got five separate riding modes. We've got sport, which I'm in at the moment. To change them, it's literally just a button here, mode, it says on it on the left hand side. And then you're in standard, rain, gravel which is for more off-road, we'll come on to that later. User, so this is configurable to how you how you would like the, the setting. You can go really in depth into it. You've got your power, as I was saying, engine, braking, traction control, ABS, and there's three different levels that you can set each of those on. Very configurable. And then back to sport, number five. So no shortage of power modes. The thing that stands out, gave it a little bit of throttle on a tiny bit of open road there, still in the city. The suspension's really fun, I'm assuming, because it is set up for partly off-road. I mean, let's be honest, who's going to take this off-road? I, I wouldn't. Because it is set up partly off-road, it's quite pliable, I would explain it as a suspension. It's very forgiving, but it's not wallowy or anything like a big old adventure bike in off-road mode. It's not like that. It's sure-footed and planted, but for in the city, it's fun. You know, when you come up to a corner, you, you let off the throttle, feel the, the front dive a little bit, and you can just sort of roll with it. It's a really nice feeling. You can feel what's going on on the road. So far, it's more of a... I'm actually reviewing this as more of a motorbike than a scooter. It, it doesn't really feel like a scooter to me at all, bar the riding position. It's a strange concept. It feels weird. Right, so we're just coming up to Richmond Park here. We'll go and pull over and have a chat a little bit more in depth about the specifications, etc. City riding, don't get me wrong, it's really good in the city. It's good fun. The riding modes are really easy to change, I like that. And if you pop it in rain mode, riding around the city, I can imagine the, the fuel consumption, MPG, would be really good. It puts it right up. I mean, we're in third gear now, going 20 miles an hour, so just sipping fuel. I am a bit torn as to whether all of this, the dash here, bar my ugly GoPro looking thing in my bag, is Africa Twin style. I feel like I'm riding an Africa Twin, just with a slightly smaller TFT, basically. But then it doesn't feel... It, <laughs> when you look down, it's not, and the riding position is completely different. It feels strange to me. Maybe it just needs need to get used to it a bit more. But if you're in the city, I think maybe you either have a scooter or, or a bigger motorbike. It's definitely in between. Look at this. That's like Safari. Hey, guys. Oh, beautiful deers, aren't they? Just creep past. Hey, buddy. Yeah, the deer's approved. Okay, guys, so I've found a, a spot in Richmond Park to pull over. Yeah, what's it all about? I'm struggling at the moment. I want to get on some slightly quicker roads and give her a go, but yeah, she's interesting. What are we talking with the engine? So it's a Honda saying 750. It's a 745cc parallel twin out of the NC. 750, exactly the same motor carried across. So it's not the most exciting engine, but very reliable Honda. It's got a nice brrr, brrr, if you've ever ridden the Honda's parallel twin, very nice sound to it and a nice smooth character to the engine and matched with the DCT. Really good for in town, it's so smooth. So the engine, engine specs, oh, it's so windy today. The engine specs, we're on an adventure on a scooter. Engine specs is 58 brake horsepower and 69 newton meters of torque. So plenty for in the city and actually it'll probably be quite fun out on some twisties as well. 
Okay guys, so moving on to the suspension. Front suspension is 41 millimeter diameter inverted fork. So it's nice suspension. As I was saying, riding through the city, it feels really nicely damp. You can feel the adventure tune in the suspension actually. It's got a nice, not a wallow, but a nice give to it, but a lot of feedback from the road. The suspension's really nice. Up the front, there's 153 millimeter travel in the suspension. So it soaks up potholes and bumpy roads really nicely. So the brakes up the front, yeah, nothing incredibly sharp or anything, but they're they're, they're, they're good brakes. You've got 296 millimeter four piston caliper Nissan brakes at the front, um, really, really capable for in the city and for a scooter, if we're calling this a scooter, um, very good brakes. So the rear suspension is a monoshock with 150 millimeter travel, saying it works really nicely. I, I'm not gonna take it off road. I wouldn't have thought it's that capable off road, but I'm sure on gravel tracks and stuff, actually, you could have quite a bit of fun with it, getting the back end out a bit and having fun, but you wouldn't wanna go technical off-roading, let's say. Busy in Richmond Park today, sorry about all the cars. It's a two single disc, 240 millimeter with a single piston Nissan caliper. And actually, I was surprised by the rear brakes when I accidentally, maybe it was the shock, but accidentally pulled on the left rear brake, which is not the clutch with these DCT models. Yeah, really good stopping power on the rear brakes. What do you think about the looks of the XADV 750? Personally, I actually quite like them. They're different, that's for sure. They're, they're quite modern, I'd describe them as. And you've got a little bit of the Africa Twin mixed in there, obviously with the scooter look as well. But for a scooter, I think it's awesome. I'd, I would personally go for the red paint spec at the Honda Red. I think that looks really cool with it. It's a modern, technical looking machine. It's more than just a scooter, this. For sure it's a hundred percent more than just a commuting easy scooter there's some there's some techn technology behind this that makes it makes it really nice just on a point on the off-roading so it comes standard with these tires that are sort of well they're not knobbly but there's definitely a, a nod towards off-roading so you could use those on a gravel track i think they'd be quite capable well for instance like obviously we're in richmond park i'm not allowed down there <laughs> you'd be arrested but yeah you could go down there fine to saying on the other other side of things it's not massively off-roading because the front wheel's 17 inch and the rear's 15 inch so you're not going to be doing huge jumps and ragging it off-road and going on massive adventures on this with a 17 inch front wheel but like you say you can do gravel tracks and nice easy things like that if you fancy it which is pretty cool i think for a scooter as i was saying earlier the seat height's 820 millimeters and actually it's quite wide seat so i'm really just on the balls of my my feet and i'm five foot nine for reference off we go just so easy i mean look what am i doing with my feet i have no idea i'd never do that on another motorbike it's just like it's like jumping on an armchair the boards there's so many options of where to put your feet like you just sort of you can have them up front cruiser style kicking back you can have them neutral you can actually have them back a bit. Honda do for the X ADV. You can get adventure pegs, so you can get normal pegs, which you have your feet back a bit more, which would be better for sportier riding and if you're you're gonna take it off road for standing up as well. So so that's useful. The TFT dash on this, I'm not gonna go fully into it. There's so much you can do. Yeah, you can adjust loads of things on this. I believe it's slightly different to the Honda Africa Twin Dash TFT, but it's it's really good. It's very technical for a scooter. I mean, that's brilliant. That's that's all you need. Look at those stags. Amazing. Beautiful. I can tell you the XADV is great for cruising around Richmond Park <laughs> looking at the deer. Or for going on adventure for that matter. Let's pop her in sport, see what it's about. Ah, oh, it's stuck behind a load of cars. Typical. A little bit of stretch of road here, guys. The DCT switches down nicely. It's fun in sport. You're not going to be breaking any records, but yeah, it's not lacking power. It's, it's a strange concept. So in conclusion, I know this has mainly been a city city riding for the uh, XADV, but um, yeah, just as an initial an initial go on it, and 
and impressions i need more time but if you're after a capable scooter then like surely you can't beat this whether it's more practical than a scooter yeah, it's a capable machine it's more than just a scooter if you're interested in adventure bikes but you're just riding around the city but you want something that's fun you know you can go a little bit gravel off-road if you want then this is great fun it's a hell of a machine if you got the change spare change eleven thousand pounds or ten nine 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 and you want something with all the gizmos nice engine premium build quality that's practical around town then look no further this is a this is a great machine for that so just a quick one to round off guys i think i've come up with what this bike suits and would be really good for um, unfortunately i'm not going to say off-roading and doing backflips um, <laughs> i reckon if you're I was just cruising through Richmond here. It's just really easy and practical with the DCT. If maybe you live in the suburbs of a city, but you work in the city and you're commuting into the city in and out quite a lot, but then you have quicker roads out in the suburbs or even out of the city a little bit more where you live, this would be really good for it. Fun out on the quicker roads. You've got great wind protection all of the tech you need but in the city it's fantastic i'm very big into how a bike makes you feel and in the city this makes me feel like i'm riding a substantial motorbike it's not just another scooter you know it's more than that it's more of a serious concept which i like it feels more serious and grown up so yeah that's just a quick one where i think this bike really comes into its own it's a fun different bike i'd like to ride it some more many thanks for watching See you in the next vid. Till next time. Ciao Bella. <laughs>